Hello, this is Jack from teachingeslonline.com. And in this video, we're going to talk about six things that you just don't need to worry about when you're starting out as an online teacher. Now, I know how overwhelming it can be to think about your marketing plan, the lessons you have to create, what kind of niche you're going to have, etc. And by the end of this video, you should feel a lot more relaxed about moving forward with this new journey. So these are gonna be six things that, again, we just don't need to focus too much energy on when starting out. And these are gonna be things that you should avoid um, when becoming an online teacher. So let's just get started with number one. And this is my favorite, having a flashy website, okay? Now, what I mean by flashy is having lots of initial pages when starting out, having pricing tables, having those sliders that come in and out of the screen, having lots of corporate pictures on your site, having numbers that pop up on your screen as people scroll down. And I think a lot of people fall into this trap because they want to give people coming to their site as much information as possible so that this person can make a decision about whether you are the teacher for them or not. But the problem with this is that when you put a lot of information on your site, people are going to browse, they're going to read, they're going to have a look around, but they won't take any action. So it's vital that you set up your website and your web presence in general so that people are taking action. So set it up for conversions and not for browsing. Now, what I mean by that is where people are taking action as soon as possible. They're either booking an initial consultation with you or they're downloading something for free and they're becoming part of your email marketing campaign. So that is the most important thing that you need to focus on. And putting lots of flashy elements takes that away. It actually pushes learners away from converting and just makes them browse your website. So when you're starting your website, keep it simple. Think about what the action you want people to take is and how you can entice people to do that. So you can do this when creating a site with WordPress, with something like Squarespace, or something like Lead Pages Sites, which is a new service that really focuses on conversions. And if you want to know more about those options, I'll leave some more information in the description. Okay, number two, lesson plans. So if you're going to be teaching languages or anything that is, has this instructional element to it, then you might want to think about how am I going to plan my lessons? What resources am I going to use? And, I, and that I should have a big batch of lessons before I get started. But this is a mistake because of a few reasons. But firstly, if you don't have any students, then you won't need any lesson plans. The most important thing to concentrate on is getting students in the beginning, okay? That's what you want to do as an independent online teacher. So find your lesson plans once you have your students. Because also, given one-to-one -one lessons online means that you can tailor your lessons to match the student that you have. And you won't really know what you're going to use until you have that initial consultation with your learner because it's different than just having a, a group of 10 students who, who all have the same level and going through a group lesson plan. It's not gonna be like that. It's gonna be more conversational based um, and depending on your niche, but it's going to definitely be more conversational when you speak with your learner. So find students, then find lesson plans. And I'll leave a link in the description to a video where I talk about how to create your own lesson plans and where to find the best lesson plans. But don't worry about that until you have a student. Also, don't worry about getting flashy equipment. Now, right now I'm using a digital camera. I've got two lights here, a microphone. I'm gonna be using my MacBook to edit this video on Final Cut Pro. So I have flashy equipment, but when I started out, I just used a simple device, a simple camera, that's what I used to begin with. And these days, it's so much easier now because of the, the quality of video on phones. 
So what I recommend is film your first few videos, if you're going to make videos, using your phone. And get outside, get good lighting, get good audio, and just film on your phone if it's one of the newer versions. And then once you start putting content out there, you can, you'll realize what kind of equipment you're going to need moving forward. But don't just buy lots of equipment to begin with. The only things that you really need when starting out, I think is some kind of headset if you're giving one-to-one -one lessons or an external microphone with earphones so you have good quality audio. And just to make sure that your computer is fast enough to do the actions you want to do. Um, so test your computer using Zoom, zoom.us, link in the description, to see if the connection works well for you. And then you can take things from there. But I'm sure it's gonna work fine if you're able to stream a HD video online. Number four, don't worry about being everywhere. What I mean by this is don't worry about getting on all the different social media platforms. You don't have to be on Pinterest, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and, and others. Instead, pick one or two and go all in on those platforms. And also know that you might not need to use social media at all because you can find students using classified postings through your network and just through connecting with people in real life. You can also put flyers around cities, that kind of thing to use different types of marketing methods. But if you wanna use social media, don't think that you have to be on them all. In fact, it's going to just stress you out because to try and create content and to grow an audience on these different platforms, it takes work, it takes connecting with people, especially in, in those initial stages. And if you're trying to do that on too many platforms, you're going to spread yourself too thin. So don't worry about being everywhere. Number five, don't worry about offering lots of different services and products, okay? Because you can do things like offering one-to-one -one lessons, you can offer group lessons, you can work with students asynchronously and give them writing feedback or speaking feedback. You can create a audio book and sell that. You can create online courses. And trying to do all of those things, again, it's just going to be too overwhelming. And you're not be, you won't be able to put your focus onto one of those things to make them work. Now, just a little note on this. If you're starting out and you want to bring an income in straight away, Focus on services first, because it's the easiest way to do it. If you want to build something that's more scalable for the future, and you don't need income right now, then maybe think about creating an online course where you can build the course, use something like Teachable, and then promote it using good marketing, not with a flashy website, but with a website that converts people. And you maybe you want to do a little bit of both, but don't offer everything, especially at the beginning. Focus on one good service, and then maybe look at creating some kind of product as well in the background. But again, it just depends on where you are right now. Number six, your niche. Don't worry about getting your niche perfect when starting out. A lot of people get in touch with me and say, I wanna start teaching online, but I'm not sure about my niche yet. It's difficult to know exactly what your niche is gonna be when starting out. Now, when I started, I had, um, I gave general English lessons. Then I started to give IELTS preparation because one student asked for it and I really enjoyed doing that. Then I also started to do financial English because I had a couple of students who were in the stock market and they wanted to learn that type of English. Then I started to create self-study materials for learners so that they could download them and take them on and study on their own. I didn't know that was gonna be my niche when I started, but I went with what I knew at that time and just let it evolve over time. So a lot of people, if they don't have experience, I recommend giving general conversational English lessons where your main focus of the lesson is having a conversation. And you can bring in different elements around that. But it just depends on you and what you want to achieve. But if you spend too much time thinking about this, then you won't actually get started. And you'll just, if you get too much into the analysis of everything, you just won't make any progress. So that is a common theme here. It's 
to put something out there so that you can actually get the ball rolling. So you can actually start with this journey. So you can find your first student and teach them because giving a lesson online puts everything else into context. You'll know more about things like what equipment you're going to need to teach, what kind of lesson plans you're going to need, what your niche is, who do you like working with, what do you like teaching, what kind of services and products you want to offer in the future. Because if you just go into this and try to make everything perfect to begin with, it's not gonna work. It's gonna be very hard for you to gain any kind of momentum. So let me know what you think. Is there anything else that we shouldn't be worrying about when starting out as an online teacher? So leave a comment below. And then go to the description to get more resources to help you become a successful online independent teacher. If you haven't taken it yet, I have a free video course that goes through what you need to focus on and gives you tips so that you can become a successful teacher. And I also have a course, the Teach English or Any Language or Any Subject online course. So be sure to check that out too. Now, if you've enjoyed this, then please like and share it and get in touch with me if you have any questions. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.